Hello, everyone. My name is Linda, and I'm on Dr. Amon's communications team. A couple of weeks ago, we published a blog titled, Marijuana Causes Long-Term Brain Changes, and boy, oh boy, did it cause a stir. The intent of this very short blog was not to voice any sort of political standpoint or to perpetuate the criminalization of marijuana, but rather to briefly illuminate the very real and very provable brain changes that Dr. Amen and the rest of our doctors have witnessed in people who use marijuana, specifically marijuana that is higher in THC long-term for medical or recreational purposes. I have Dr. Chapek on the line with me today. Dr. Chapek was quoted in said blog and practices at our Bellevue, Washington, Amen Clinic. Mind you, marijuana was legalized for medical use in Washington back in 2012. So Dr. Chapek has helped a lot of people who come into the clinic with issues like anxiety, ADD, PTSD, or depression who want to feel better and don't even realize that marijuana use may actually be keeping them in that cycle of anxiety, irritability, anger, or sadness. So Dr. Chapek is going to tell us why. Welcome, Dr. Chapek. Will you please briefly describe your uh, educational background and clinical experience? Oh, thank you, Linda, for talking today more about this really hot and interesting topic. So my background is I'm a naturopathic physician. After graduation, I worked in a dual diagnosis partial hospital program, it's like a residential type program for folks who had severe depression, anxiety, eating disorders, all sorts of mental health issues, as well as um, addiction issues. So uh, people who are hooked on alcohol, marijuana, amphetamines, any sorts of drugs. And I worked there for about six years and got a really deep understanding of mental health and the co-occurring substance abuse issues with that. And I worked mm-hmm. there for about six years and eventually was a medical director there. And then you came to the Amen Clinic, uh, the believe in the last couple of years. So you've definitely had quite a bit of experience since the medical marijuana bill was passed there. Um, Sounds like you've been helping people with addiction issues for many years, and that was without the use of SPECT imaging, which is, uh, for anyone who's unfamiliar, the advanced diagnostic tool used by the Amen Clinics, which helps us see the actual blood flow and activity occurring in the brain of an individual Uh, including areas that are high in activity and areas that are low in activity. So, doctor, how has the use of SPECT imaging helped you better understand the effects of long-term marijuana use in the brain? Yeah, so looking at SPECT scans of these individuals that we see, it's really predictable who uses marijuana. Typically, someone who uses marijuana has either insomnia, anxiety, depression, or ADD, and they've really found that marijuana helped them, and I can't blame them for that, except that uh, it's short-term, so it may calm them in the moment, but the bad news is it calms the entire brain, including a part of the brain called the prefrontal cortex. This part of the brain, what I've noticed in working with individuals, is that it, when it's lowered, they have problems with focus, motivation, and executive function, which is thinking ahead and planning. They're very important in everyday life. And um, this is more with the chronic uh, long-term use. Uh Uh-huh. So people with ADD not smoke marijuana or use THC-rich marijuana long-term. Right. Their their frontal lobes are already low. We don't want to make them worse. And we also see that marijuana affects another part of the brain called the temporal lobes. And these are your um, right behind your temples, and if you think about the root word there, it's temper, temperament. And this is partly why, if you've heard of CBD, that's why that's helpful for temporal lobe epilepsy. Right, CBD and THC. Can you tell us a bit about the difference there? It's kind of confusing. Yeah, yeah it is. There are these different components. So THC is the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana that makes you feel high and, and euphoric or makes oh. individuals feel high. And CBD is non-psychoactive and, and has some of the more medicinal properties as far as 
helping with seizures. It's also been shown to be neuroprotective in some studies and anti-inflammatory. Um, so actually, there is a little bit of good research on it. Um, I think more needs to be done, but there's these interesting. It, it's 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 not a simple plant. I mean, there's there's multiple chemicals in marijuana. That's why it has different right. kinds of effects. And so many different brain types. So, okay, I'm sorry. I interrupted a bit and got you off track. You were oh, telling okay. me um, about the temporal lobes. Please continue. It's fascinating. Yeah. A couple of people I've worked with um, had problems with irritability and anger, and they found that marijuana helps them be mm-hmm. less angry. Um, but it's more like they'll use it and they'll feel less angry in the moment, but the next day they don't, they're more irritable again. Some of the yeah. individuals... In the treatment center I was mentioning that I worked in, when they came off of marijuana, they were just so irritable and angry and moody. And that, I mean, we could, we knew to kind of watch out and steer clear of, of folks who were coming off of pot who didn't really use it heavily. Yeah. Wow, fascinating. So, okay, so people use marijuana to calm the temporal lobes. Why would there be overactivity there in the first place or um, uncomfortability? There's a number of reasons why. I mean. Some some folks just genetically have more issues with their temporal lobes, They're kind of born with it. Other people uh, may have acquired it from like a head injury. The temporal lobes are easily damaged with head injury. And what we found at the AMA clinics is that head injury, even even subtle head injury over time, can lead to changes in the brain. And uh, so you can't see that on a CT or an MRI, so other types of scan mm. looking at the anatomy of the brain. The SPECT scan looks at function, so, you know, that activity pattern is, is changed um, with minor head injury, and that's that's another common cause of irritability. Right, and that's something we're seeing in the NFL players, and I believe that Dr. Amon's study demonstrated as well is that there was yeah. uh, anger, depression, ADD-like symptoms, and a lot of that was connected, I think, to temporal lobe issues. Yes, that's exactly right. It's a very good point. Uh, I've, I also worked with a number of ex-NFL players here in Bellevue, and they have had this pattern of memory problems in particular, but also irritability. And um, Okay, hold on. So you said memory, temporal lobes and memory, they're connected as well? Memory and temporal lobes. So the hippocampus uh-huh. is your memory center, and that tends to go with Alzheimer's, for example, and that's part of the temporal lobe, yes. And so the temporal lobe does memory, it does mood, fluctuating moods. If someone has an issue with that, irritability, those are the three I think of. And it's just a, sort of a classic pattern that we see all the time. So that's the temporal lobe. Is there any other area that marijuana slows down and uh, affects someone's quality of life? Yeah. So, I mean, the, typically the brain structure that we see, so I see a brain scan. I see someone come in and they mm-hmm. have parts of the brain lit up or active, overactive. Mm-hmm. And, and this is typically the basal ganglia, sometimes the thalamus, and the basal ganglia is a fancy word, but it means it's a part of the brain. In the, it's the uh, alarm center in the brain. It's a worry or anxiety center. And folks with PTSD, uh, insomnia, or just have too much on their mind, can't turn their minds off. Uh, marijuana, uh, very effectively, I think, for these people, for huh. anyone who has this problem, calms it down. The, the key is that although it calms it down short term, everything's calmed long term, including the prefrontal, as we said. So that's the, that's the drawback. And the temporal lobe, again, um, it's kind of stabilized short term, but then we get the, the moodiness and irritability after the fact, after someone's used. And it's more of a problem with long term use. Right. So there's like an intense rebound effect. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. You know, with the CBD, I wonder about folks using it for epilepsy or other conditions. I mean, it sounds like it's effective. And there was a story recently, a family was looking for a treatment for their child, and anesthesia meds were not working. She was having seizures, seizure after seizure. CBD was helpful, and so I think that's really great. And we need we need to know more, we need yeah. more research, but I don't know about individuals using it as medicine, you know, we just don't know enough. I mean, the claims are pretty far-reaching for CBD, and I I don't know if they're all, if there's research to back them all up. Wow. This is some real talk right here. 
outside of CBD, are there studies backing up everything else that you've told me about the temporal lobes and uh, the basal ganglia and memory and mood issues? Yes. So there's multiple studies showing decreases in memory, focus, concentration. That's very clear. And like any other drug or something that makes us feel good, someone can get addicted to it. Mm -hmm. And... um, it you know it hits the pleasure center and that's where we get into problems. Mm. Um, especially so just for feeling people. good on a daily basis without a substance, it could affect that ability. Right. It it sort of sets the sets the bar higher, and so um, that's the whole problem with addiction is that it it feels kind of right, especially uh-huh. if you're having a really uncomfortable symptom like anxiety. You found something like marijuana to help. Most of the folks I see now are not coming in for help with marijuana. They're coming in for help with for anxiety or insomnia or PTSD, and they just happen to be using marijuana. And we just we can offer something else instead to calm the brain, reduce stigma. Because with a brain scan, um, we can see that yeah, I can I can understand why you would be anxious. We can see that, and let's find another way to calm that down. Well, another question I have is about youth using marijuana because in at least one state, now in Colorado, they're, um, it's deregulated and uh, can be purchased for recreational use. And I hear that the same law may be passing in Washington. So yeah. the regulations are now like alcohol. How does that affect young people? Yeah, so the, there's a number of studies on individuals using a marijuana younger than 17, and especially if it's more chronic use. Because the, the brain is more vulnerable, you know, the brain is not fully developed until age 25, there's a bigger impact. There's more cognitive deficits, there's decreased blood flow, there's problems with sort of response speed, which is something that's measured on cognitive testing, executive function, which we talked about, thinking ahead, planning. Those are really serious problems that we don't know how permanent they are. There's some studies that show they are permanent changes, and there's some that are, so it's mixed. And I think part of that's mixed because when we're talking about humans and the brain, everyone's brain is different. Plus, there's different strains of marijuana with different amounts of THC and CBD. And and so I think it's hard to study and really nail it down. But it's really clear that youth especially uh, is not a good idea. And I'm glad there is the age limit for purchasing. But, you know, when there is a law like that, which I think... Well, still just 21. If the brain doesn't stop or stop developing until 25, that could be an issue. And we know as well, kids get a hold of alcohol. We've known that for years. So they'll get a hold of marijuana as well. So I guess that brings me to like another really big question that was brought up not only in the comments, but also I think President Obama even said something about this. Which is worse for the brain, alcohol or marijuana? Why? And what do you see on sex scans with heavy users of either or? Both, you can see pretty big changes on the brain. We see it as holes, in quotes. There's not actual holes because it's a functional scan. But I would say alcohol is worse for the brain. I would agree with President Obama on that one. (laughs) Uh, It's more toxic. um, But marijuana, I think, uh, can be equally insidious um, Mm -hmm. as far as its long-term problems. Okay. So you, you mentioned holes on the scan. Does that mean areas of lowered activity? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. So it doesn't and blood actually, flow? Yeah. So it's areas of lowered activity and blood flow. I wouldn't say they're actual holes, okay. but that's what you so, see on the scan. So that's like where neurons have stopped firing. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, that's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. That's powerful. So for someone who has anxiety or insomnia, totally connected, or has ADD and wants to stop self-medicating with marijuana, um, what type of natural solutions exist? Yeah, so what I recommend is a number of things. So if we start with supplements, magnesium. Mm -hmm. So magnesium is a common mineral, and it's very, very calming. So in in the brain, we go back to the temporal lobe, there's these calcium channels. Mm-hmm. Calcium channels are activating, and magnesium relaxes those and calms those areas of the brain. 
And so magnesium is very safe, can be used um, for insomnia and anxiety. Another supplement is GABA, G-A-B-A. And GABA is a neurotransmitter, but it can be taken as a supplement. It's also very safe and hits the GABA receptors. And GABA is in that way very calming. So GABA is something that we produce naturally since it's a neurotransmitter? Right, exactly. It's something that we we make in the brain. And Mm -hmm. I think someone who has anxiety typically has less and kind of Mm. deficient in that. Is that something that you can see on a spec scan? We assume. It's not something we see. And it's more, especially if we see temporal lobe decreases, things Mm -hmm. like GABA and magnesium are going to be helpful. They also tend to help with the basal ganglia. Well, thanks. So, okay, so that's great, the uh, supplements. And then what if someone had a really hard day and they just want to smoke? What should they do instead? Well, I would suggest if they had a hard day, if you can get yourself out, exercising is probably one of the best. Even if you feel tired, it's like energy is one of those things, if you use it, you sort of get more of it. Like if you go and exercise and expend some energy, oftentimes it flushes out the stress hormones, which are actually keeping you down and and lethargic. Yes, and then you're going to have more energy, have better mood. So even to walk around the block, get some fresh air, try that first. Sometimes people are just tired. Another nice one is if you have any um, guided imagery, CDs, Mm. things like that. Meditation is extremely helpful. Brain balancing activity. It calms down basal ganglia, increases prefrontal and helpless focus and concentration uh, dramatically. And so that's probably exercise and meditation are two of the best. Um, Something that uh, Dr. Amen has developed is the ANT therapy, automatic negative thoughts, which can be very helpful for identifying negative thinking patterns that can be um, sort of triggering or make someone want to smoke. Right. It's like a vicious cycle of negative thoughts. And from what I understand, when someone has a negative thought, the brain releases chemicals in response to keep them feeling bad. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. This has been illuminating. Uh, I really appreciate you taking some time today. And um, if anyone would like to contact Dr. Chapek, uh, please visit our website, amonclinics.com. Click on locations, go to the Bellevue Clinic, and there will be a phone number. You can also read his bio there. So thank you so much. My pleasure talking with you. Thank you.